We are sitting here with the baseball Brit. Joey Mello is going to discuss his journey through every ballpark, every game, the 2019 season. Let's go. What a setup. All right, what's up, everybody? We are recording from Radio Row at winter meetings. It's like a quiet, gloomy time. No one's here yet. I guess today was a non-setup day, but we have a special guest. We have Joey Mellows, the baseball Brit. If you haven't heard his story, be prepared to because it's pretty fun and pretty interesting. And we got him decked out in a Roosevelt's shirt because they sent us to winter meetings, and they are doing a big discount, John Bino, 20% off whatever shirt you want to buy, they sent us here, and we appreciate it. And Jake's here, and he looks good, too. What color shirt is that, Joey? It's mint. mint. It, is, it is mint. He's correct. I'm, I'd like to open with an apology okay. because I am going to sink into my Brad, bad British accent that I've already shown Joey a little bit. Oh, dear, not we, again. We just <laughs> that was me talking, actually. Um, <laughs> and we, uh, but we just, we just had a, little, a lunch and a brew. We did, And yeah. now we're all best friends. What is a lunch and a brew how you would say that? No, I've okay. not heard that phrase before. I haven't, to be fair, I haven't heard that phrase either. Well, what, what would you say what we just like, did? Yeah, you'd call, like in, in England, a brew is a cup of tea or more than, more than oh. a beer. Oh. Yeah, and uh, okay. lunch is, no, we still use the word lunch, obviously. Yeah, okay. Like, Damn. That's what? cool. So, <laughs> no, you blew it right away. Yeah, instantly. So, this is your second year at winter meetings. It's our second year at winter meetings. Oh, yeah. yeah, so we both have the same thing. Like, uh, we have no idea if last year was regular and this year is going to be different or last year was abnormal and this year is going to be different. But I do know that it's a lot of fun. And, and for someone like you who just got it, I don't know if you just got into baseball, just got into this baseball world with all the reporters and everything, you actually inundated yourself quicker than we did. But would you just say that the scene here is <laughs> kind of wild? This scene is not <laughs> what we're meetings. currently looking at. Is not, but I yeah. mean, Vegas was wild. I'd never been to yeah. Las Vegas before in my life, so that coupled with the fact I didn't go outside for six days in a row due to the winter meetings here in San Diego, I went to the wrong hotel to begin with. I was down at the Hilton. Yeah, yeah. Well, we found that out at the last second that this wasn't at the Hilton; it was at the Hyatt. Yeah, because we we got our Airbnb for the Hyatt. Or for the Hilton. Whatever. It's all very confusing. So, yeah, at the moment, people are still rolling in to the winter meetings. But uh, it'd be good to kind of compare this one to Vegas. And if it's half as fun as Vegas was, it's going to be a good week. Yeah. I think, I think we do have to go back a yeah, little we bit. Because we, we know you. You're, you're a beautiful man who likes baseball from overseas. But tell, tell the people, like, I, I actually struggle with this. When people ask, like, hey, what do you do? I'm like... Uh, like I've started saying like we're sports media and it's baseball focused, blah, blah, blah. But like when people ask you, what's your like elevator pitch? Um, <laughs> normally I'll say I'm having, you know, some sort of midlife, early midlife <laughs> meltdown. <laughs> um, I was, I'm on an adventure. I've had a, I've had a year off from work and, uh, yeah, I don't, I'm not employed by anyone. So U S immigration officials that gave me a hard time yesterday <laughs> coming in. Yeah. I'm just here on my own dime and, uh, trying to get people interested in baseball back in Europe. Uh, but a lot of people I think that uh, are kind of connected with are actually American fans that have watched baseball growing up and maybe have kind of had some time away from the game and now they see it through you know through my eyes like I'm a child I've been into baseball for five years literally a five-year-old like when it comes to your national pastime so I think they that they kind of enjoy the ridiculous takes I have from you know like one of the ridiculous takes is your managers wear full uniform yeah. as if mm -hmm. they're playing yeah Clint Hurdle I know he's not you know not, not with the Pirates anymore but I saw him last year at the winter meetings or whatever. He's a he's a good looking six foot four guy, and then you see him all dressed up in full baseball stuff, and he's got his belly hanging out. It's over tough, his man. Yeah, like I don't know why you. Like baseball's got a lot of weird stuff like that, which I, I it's think the only sport that does that, right? Uh, yeah, I don't think football. Yeah. They don't wear ice uniforms. Hockey, do they wear basketball. No ice hockey gear. <laughs> no, that'd, be, that'd be awesome. But well, they do Aaron, not. Aaron Boone doesn't wear the jersey. Did you notice that? Did he wear like a hoodie or something? He wear, yeah, he wears a hoodie or like pajama. They're drifting away. Shirt. So he, okay. he's breaking the mold. But uh, yeah, Girardi used to wear a full uniform. It is ridiculous. Well, he's back now, isn't he? Is he with the Phillies? Philly. With the Phillies now. They maybe will be rocking the rocking the red pinstripes and the white, but. Uh, yeah, like baseball's this. There, there's so much weird stuff for people in Europe to kind of take in, and that's just all part of it. The manager's uniforms and the win statistic and the save statistic and all this other crazy stuff you guys kind of have. 
Yeah, is there – so I said this earlier, like you've been inundated with baseball. Did your love for baseball start recently or did your just – your trip to America was last year but you've been a baseball fan for a decade? Oh, no, like uh, I grew up in England and I, I left England when I was 29 years old for South Korea. I don't think I'd ever seen a baseball game on television or in our newspapers or online. Mm-hmm. I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know how many players there were. And I moved to Seoul in South Korea in 2014 for a teaching job. And I saw my first game in Japan. My uncle's Japanese, so we went over to see where he grew up in Japan in 2015, April. And see, ah, talking Yanks. I was in a hotel lobby in Osaka, and there was this big bloke on the TV playing sports. And I said to the barman, I said, who is this bloke? It was CC Sabathia. Yeah. And he had a big old belly, <laughs> and he was like, you know, he looked absolutely done. It was like a very nice belly. Yeah. Very nice <laughs> belly. And he was like, he was throwing some heat, and I was like, what is this? And they're like, oh, this is baseball. This is the New York Yankees, and this is CC Sabathia. He's a big deal. So I was like, oh, my God. So I was like, Dad, come and have a look at this. Uh, and we're in the bar, and we went out to a game that night. My dad was like, well, let's, let's see if there's one locally. And there was. The Kai Sierra Dome, the uh, Oryx Buffaloes. Um, Ichiro Suzuki used to play for the Oryx Blue Wave and you know they, they kind of merged with another team in 2005 I think it was the same year the Nationals started and uh, yeah we went and watched the game in the Kyocera Dome that night and I went back on my own the following night I loved it so much you've got the beer girls the numbers yeah. you know coming from a soccer background or football background if you're English and you're listening um, you know we're not allowed to drink a beer in view of the, the pitch as we call it because of really? you know historic issues with hooliganism yeah. and violence and all the rest of it and our Home and away fans are segregated. And what I liked about baseball was there were families and children and, you know, as many women as men almost. And uh, it was just a good time. Do you know why baseball is in, like, South Korea and it's not in Britain? Like, do you know the history behind why baseball is where it is? I know a little bit about the history, but not much. So baseball baseball is only in places where people from the U.S. sent missionaries or military. So it's in South Korea because there's a military base. It's in Japan because there's military bases. It's in Dominican Republic because there was missionaries there. So that's the only... So we, the U.S. never really had big military influence or missionary influence in the U.K., so baseball never went there. I mean, that's your history knowledge, again, coming to yeah. the fore. Yeah. Yeah, that's really interesting. I, I, I didn't know it was to do with the missionaries. I thought it was, yeah, just army-based. Yeah, it, it's such an American sport. Like, even in the Little League World Series, like Saudi, Saudi Arabia will always have a team uh, in the Little League World Series, and it's all Americans, and there's like a base there, and it's there, Amer- the American kids. Oh, that so makes it, a lot of sense. It's, it's, it's still like, you know, uh, Dominican Republic, the DR, they have tons of players, and they're, it is like their national game more so than America's, like it's their primary game more than it's America's primary game because the NFL's taken over, but it's still just, it's only American influence. No other place has like just done it. Right, yeah, and that's you know something that I'm hoping will change in you know in Europe anyway, with more people playing it in the continent I'm from. Did you decide to do your uh, round trip and go to all the stadiums in 2019 after they announced the London series or before? I'd always plan to do a road trip. You know, like yourself, I'm a big movie buff, so um, you know there were you know the Easy Rider movies and the counterculture movement of the late 1960s, and I'd always had a romantic notion of you know being on a motorbike or driving across the country and seeing it from that perspective. And then I kind of, when the MLB London series got announced, I kind of thought this is the perfect pairing yeah. for my two, you know, my two passion projects, which is, you know, film, something I've been into since I was a kid. People in the UK probably maybe don't realise, but, you know, we grew up on Disney movies and most of the movies in our cinemas are American movies. Mm-hmm. So without realising it, you know, from you know from the age of three or four years old, you kind of have this romanticised version of America in your head where you kind of want to go and see it and stuff. And, you know, Disney owns all of our childhoods, so, um, yeah, the, the movies and the baseball is the perfect pairing, and uh, that's 162 games. I just read a book called The Grind uh, by a bloke who was a journalist with the, with the Washington Nationals, and in that book, it's like each chapter's like, you know, he kind of follows 162 games from the perspective of a player. The most interesting chapter is the guy that's in charge of all the, all the luggage, all the equipment. All oh, the lo- yeah, the equipment manager. All the logistics, and then, yeah, you've got, like, one of the wives... Um, it's uh, it's a fascinating book, and I thought, yeah, 162 games. If I can do it, like that'd be pretty wild. Did you go to 162? No, I tried. It's crazy. It's it's no like when yeah. we started doing this and covering every single game, it, it's really fucking crazy. And baseball players, they do it like they have to, but like 162 games over six months, it is such a grind. I think that's the wildest aspect of baseball for the new fan is finding out there's how many games. Because in a way, each game means it's, it's a bit more watered down. 
because you don't have the like 38 game Premier League season or whatever like where it's you know each game does kind of mean something because yeah. it's, it's the only game that that weekend or that that week sometimes and you know baseball 162 games means it is a bit watered down but uh, yeah the travel aspect I I really enjoyed and uh, I got to 148 and the only reason I missed Fuck. 148 I missed 14 and the main reason for that was when I was in London for the MLB London series I went out afterwards with some Colombian girls and we went to a reggae tron bar <laughs> and I was having a lovely old time in the reggae tron bar whatever it's called and uh, I got pickpocketed and my driving license was in the wallet and to uh, send off and get a brand new driving license it takes two weeks two working oh. weeks and that's the two weeks that cost me there you went on the IL so you did it <laughs> yeah. I went on the IL yeah. you missed two weeks this, this year that, yeah. so I thought you had missed like a day here and there but it's just not, not no so you did the grind I was waiting two weeks I was that's waiting nuts. for that driving license, and it's all because of those wonderful Colombian women. So I, I, I've got a question, and it kind of ties into, like, learning baseball, because obviously you have a different dynamic. Like you said, you were a big soccer fan. Were you a cricket fan? Like, what, what other sports were you familiar with or a fan of? No, growing up, um, my father was a professional soccer player, and I was always around, you know, the game of soccer and soccer players. Um, that's the only game I was really interested in. I went to a posh school where we had to play rugby. I wasn't allowed to play okay. soccer because it was too posh. So I played rugby for a bit and enjoyed rugby, but I'm 5'8 and 170 pounds soaking wet. So mm. it wasn't, you know, it was fun up to you about 13 or 14. And then <laughs> the other guys got you're getting big. your head stomped on or whatever. And yeah, you're getting thrown around. So yeah, I wasn't into cricket that, really that, or anything like that. That happened to me in baseball too. The other kids got big and that, that What was position do you it. play baseball? Uh, what do you think when you look at me? Shortstop, because you're kind of, you know, you've got some wires. Short? Yeah, short. No. Um, stop. Um... No, I uh, I liked I love center field and third base. Um, I didn't shortstop's brutal, man. That's that, the most skillful what, position. What right? people like underestimate, and people still throw it around casually, but that throw from shortstop is like silly. Like I, I, I think I'm gonna end up yelling this, and because there's a bunch of Derek Jeter arguments coming up recently about how good he was defensively, like for his Hall of Fame case. Yeah, I tell. I challenge everyone, next time you're driving by a park, a baseball field, go deep in the hole at shortstop, and with no momentum, try to throw that ball to first base, because that is an insane throw. Like, it's not a normal human throw. And it's, uh, so no, I couldn't play shortstop. <laughs> Long story short. I've never played the game, so I've got no idea how so hard it is. But I, have I, you walked on a on the on a field like uh, just like seen the actual distances and like you know the pitching round, how close it is, and all that? Not no? really, no. Oh, what's crazy? You've probably watched more games in person than you have on television, huh? Yeah, I mean, in Korea, I I used to watch MLB games in the morning there with the time difference. It was right. about seventeen hours from LA to Seoul. Like Seoul was seventeen hours ahead, so I used to wake up and watch. The Dodgers, because Heinz and Ryu, obviously with the Dodgers, right. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got into in 2015, and he was injured that season. But that was the season when Kershaw and Greinke went toe to toe, along with Arietta for the for the NL Cy Young. Yeah, and that's how I fell in love with Zach Greinke and uh, his 69 mile per hour curveball yeah. and his Efas pitches. And so you appreciate the pitching. I love the off speed stuff. Like in career, it's very it's more small ball orientated, and there's more off speed off speed pitching. So that's that's wildly different than I think like the average American that gets into baseball. Uh, I think. The pitching aspect is what MLB needs to promote more because a lot of people can't even tell the di- – like, and not to throw my mom under the bus. She loves baseball. She watches it, but she still says, I don't notice the different pitches, you know. Like, it's just not on her radar. Oh, that was a curveball. That was a fastball. I think that's for a lot of people that get into the game. So it's cool to hear that you said, no, I like the pitching. Yeah, like, you know, just the 12-6 to 6 arc on the curveball at times. And, like, as I've, you know, got more experience with baseball, now I really appreciate the changeup where they just take a little bit off it. And it completely throws the hit as timing, and uh, a good changeup is probably like the craziest concept of it's a the pitch. the best pitch. Yeah, it's the best pitch in baseball. A good changeup. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it, I, I distracted myself a little bit, which you'll find over the next four hours of this interview that I'll do a couple times. But when you were learning the game of baseball, and I, I producer Bill, who's here with us, we were talking about this. We were having a point at the at the pub last night, and <laughs> we were <laughs> we were talking about hockey. And I, I never played hockey. I've, you know, grown up around it. And obviously I get some of the concepts, but there's never having played slash, uh, I don't know, just some of the stuff blows my mind in hockey. And I don't know where skill meets luck sometimes. And there's, there's so many different dynamics to the game that I just, 
Uh, ice hockey or field hockey? Which ice hockey? hockey. Ice hockey. Oh, okay. I'm very good at field hockey. Um, <laughs> ice hockey. Yeah. It, it. There's parts of it that struggle clicking. Like I, I'm wondering, baseball wise, what parts of the game were you learning and maybe you struggled to learn, or are there are there still things that come up that you're like the infield fly. Like, have you have you conquered the infield fly yet? Yeah. There was. Um, there's a great book that I read by Zach Hampel. Yeah. About yeah. I think it's like learning baseball smarter or something okay. like that. Okay. Oh, that's cool. And it's it's a book that lots of us read in the UK because it breaks it down. So that's that's one of the harder ones, Jimmy. You're right about yeah. the infield fly yeah, rule, but uh, it, it makes sense where you're not deliberately letting the ball right. drop, so you can yeah. get two outs and whatever. So when um, you see like it not get called on a play where like it could have got called and they take advantage of it, you're like, ah, that's why they made that rule. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Drop yeah. third strike was that a weird one for you? Yes, that one was very weird, and I still find that quite odd, actually. You know, Do you know it was the 11th rule ever implemented in Major League Baseball back in, like, 1890 or whatever? And we found that out, like, a month ago, and it blew our minds. That one was a weird one, but the other one was the... Well, there's two that I found weird, was that you could foul off the first, foul off the second. Yeah. But you can continually foul off yeah. on third. Yeah. Like, so it doesn't count as a strike on the third foul out. And I was like, why? He's out, right? Like, yeah. why is he still stood there? Yeah. And my dad was like, I don't know. So I had to Google it, obviously. And, um, yeah, foul, then yeah, foul balls used to not count as um, strikes at all. Ever. And then they were like, like the early. Fir- early. And then they were like, the first two count. <laughs> like, we got to do something. Yeah, we've got to speed this up a bit. And then, but if you bunt on a, if you bunt strike. two strikes down, then that does count as an out. Yeah, yeah that's crazy. There's like, little like nuances it's, like that. It's such a weird game. It's, um, it's so different than majority of games. But that's what I love about it. Like, yeah. you will go to the ballpark, you know, like I did 148 times across the summer. And you will see something new pretty much every game, or you'll see at least something that you, at least I will have to kind of check. Hang on, what's happened there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I saw, I waited all season. I was desperate to see a double bunt, a bunt double. Oh, you know, where, oh. Where they bunt and beat, they get they to beat the shift. Base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I love bunts. Like, you know, getting into baseball in Japan and Korea, this is an incredibly unpopular <laughs> opinion in the USA. <laughs> yeah, where you the love analytics crew is not happy with this. You is love crazy. the, power and the that pitching stuff, and the bunts. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, in Korea, they have for their all star game and stuff, and they're, you know, they have a, a bunt competition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where you've got to bunt the ball into yeah. these little circles. Mm-hmm. And I saw a bunt last series of the whole trip in Toronto, went to Canada at the very end. Uh, the Blue Jays got a, a smashing little bunt double where it wow. kind of blooped up into the air. And because of the shift, there was no one there. You know, speeding round. Oh, I had my shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've apologized on the day to the so Blue Jays staff and apologize again. Your white whale. Particularly to the... Bunt double. Yeah. We need to get a hashtag going. Sorry? We need to get like a bunt double. Hashtag, like hashtag. Bunt double, like yeah. ma- sell some merch. Yeah. Bunt double. I love a bunt double. That's a... <laughs> you yeah. may be like one of the first people to say like, I love a bunt double. Yeah, That's I mean, there was thing. that shift that shame. Joey Gallo used to face with the Rangers. Yeah. And I was always like screaming because I you know, grew up in Korea watching baseball. Shin Su Chu on the Rangers, all of the Rangers games are shown on Korean TV, all of Ryu's games, yeah. all of Jung Ho Kang's games when he was with the Pirates uh, before the Bad guy stuff, drink yeah. driving offenses or whatever. So, uh, yeah, Joey Gallo, like, he's a guy I really like watching because he's got that incredible power. And this most recent season, his on-base percentage has, has got so yeah. much better. Yep. And uh, he's one, like, going into 2020, I want to see, you know, wh- which Joey Gallo are we going to get going forward, the 2018 Gallo or the 2019 yeah. Gallo? And uh, he's a guy that could definitely get a good bunt double against the shift for sure because he's got that Mm -hmm. power in his arm. Yeah. I want to ask about your your actual, like, journey in the cities, but one more question about learning the game. We're talking about, like, gameplay shit and trying to master that. Have you even dabbled into the statistical world? Like, uh, OPS, WRC+, plus. do you like that stuff? There's a book I read, like, Baseball by the Numbers and stuff. um, Okay. You know, it it gives a good kind of overview of the more advanced, uh, you know, met. What's it called? Metrics. Say, metrics. Metrics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. metrics. You know, Bill James and all that stuff. In, uh, yeah, you I know s- more about baseball than the average American baseball yeah. fan. Well, Do you know that? No, I mean, I'm sure that's not true. But no, that's true. No, I'm, uh, I'm having some dark realizations over here that I think you're, well, you're putting me under the table. Gee, like, as we're trying to grow the game in Europe, like, there, there are some advanced statistics I find incredibly simple to understand. Any of the plus statistics where it's essentially aggregated to 100 being league average... And below 100 means right. that he's below average or whatever. Those are so simple. <laughs> yeah. Those are made OPS simple plus. for people to yeah. understand. And yet yeah. it's an advanced. Like you, you guys are still <laughs> like, I still watch an MLB broadcast wherever I am. I've got the win statistic popping up. 
And this guy's 11 and three, and he's got like a you know a 4.3 ERA. And I'm thinking, hang on a minute, this guy's just a lucky whatever. Yeah, yeah. And like, show us his Babbitt. Like, how has he got all this stuff? And show us his FIP. Show us his ex FIP. Show us his Sierra. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And instead, they're giving out you know the wins as though it's some kind of like it's 40 percent or whatever. Like the pitcher's responsible for roughly 40 percent of that win statistic. Yeah. He's not hitting if he's in the AL, which are like I'm a Royals fan, so like the pitchers don't Ooh. hit. So it's uh, I find like the the way that MLB in a way kind of romanticizes and it's important like the nostalgia and the history and the tradition i respect all of that but going into the 21st century or 2020 like next season or whatever with a new audience potentially in europe i would love to see more mike petriello stat cast broadcast yeah. where yeah they're breaking it down and they're kind of explaining these things and you're getting like the hard you know the hard hit ball data and all that stuff so um i think baseball the exciting thing about major league baseball is that it's got a lot of different ways it can move forward if it chooses to which i think will enhance interest in the sport but it's whether it wants to say goodbye to all of its more traditional, you know, RBIs, for example. What the hell? Like, why do people care about those these days? Oh, I'll tell you why yeah. after this. Like, fan fantasy baseball, I get it. You know, you, you need saves and stolen bases and RBIs and all that stuff. But I don't I don't quite understand why, you know, people say this guy got 110 RBIs last season. Like, well, he's because he's, 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 it's about where he hits in the lineup. Yeah. Like, it doesn't tell you about how good he is necessarily. All right, we're going to take a quick break, and then I'm going to come ask you about your favorite cities you went to and all oh, that stuff. Oh, that'd be awesome, yeah. All right, that was our break. We're back. <laughs> I've, we I've throw an ad in the middle of that break for the podcast. That's so. a, a lovely music. That I, yeah. jingle you I've got. got one half hot hot buttony thing that I need. I need to know. Okay. I need to know. He needs to know. Yeah. Stop. Stop asking me to show you my FIP. What? <laughs> Something in America that, and I don't know if you know our stance on this, but one of the big topics that's been around baseball for like past 20 years now is the pace of the game and that's three hours and blah, blah, blah. I, I'm curious, like, w just what's your whole perspective on that? Cause I mean, can I guess? Mm -hmm. Is normal? Like, they got cricket and, and um, uh, uh, footy. What you were saying, soccer earlier, did that pain you to have to say soccer to appease us? No, I'm in your country. I want to respect your wow. culture and your norms. So, yeah, soccer. I'm the exact opposite. Baseball doesn't that. seem that crazy. Like, like, NBA and NFL are the reasons why Americans are like, oh, it's so slow. Because in comparison, I guess rugby. But w so, what's your answer? I would guess it's not that crazy slower. I don't get it at all. I don't get what all the fuss is about. It's, um, I think you've got more important things to worry about, like, why do you stop serving beer at the end of the seventh? Yeah. You know, don't worry wow. about how long the game is. If you keep serving it till the ninth or whatever, like, you know, people are going to drive home. They've been drinking all the way up to the end of the seventh. They're in trouble anyway. Yeah. Well, that's your fault because you guys told all the Puritans you didn't like them anymore. They came to America and now we're pure to all this Puritan, no drinking, no anything. I don't so. know. Like, for me, like, whether it's three hours or four hours, like, we had two games in London this last summer, which was four hours, 42 minutes, and four hours, oh, 24 they minutes. They were crazy. Yeah. You know, the first inning of that first game, like, Rick Porcello gave up six runs and, like, got to two out, uh, one out. Mm -hmm. Tanaka came in, got two outs, gave up six runs. Yeah. It was bonkers. There were people sat around me going, is this normal? And I was like, no. No. <laughs> I've never seen a game like this before. Like, don't look yeah. at me. I've, I've got no idea what's going on here. Yeah. Incredible right. games, though. So, no. And we cricket last five days, Jimmy. So. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've, we've, we're, our stance we've landed on that Jimmy led me to is that, like, baseball needs to lean in, in, into it more. Yeah. Like, the people that like baseball like the length of the game. Yeah. The people that don't like baseball don't like the length of the it's game, a, and that's fine. It's Keep a conversation. Like, you watch the NHL, and I like the NHL. You can't be watching the NHL and have a ca casual, converse, ongoing conversation while watching it next to the other person. Football, you kind of can. Basketball, you kind of can't either. Baseball breathes conversation. Like, you can say, what pitch do you think he's going to hear? Yeah. And then you have, like, 20 seconds to discuss it. It's just constant conversation, which I think they should definitely <laughs> romanticize more. Jimmy, I've got one counterpoint they made. Yeah. Because I went to all these games. I think watching a game in a ballpark is very different to watching it on yeah, TV. I agree. And when I got back to the UK for the postseason games and I was staying up till, you know, four in the morning trying to watch it, it does get frustrating when, you know, you've got all the bullpen changes in the sixth, the seventh, yeah. the eighth, and it's constant commercial, commercial, commercial. Yeah. yeah. And you're trying to keep invested in it. Maybe it was just because it was three or four in the morning. I was like, oh, please don't make <laughs> another bullpen change. No, there was one game. Was it the World Series or was it the NLCS? 
And it was just brutal how many changes they were making. I forget what game it was, but I remember tweeting like, man, this one is not one to display. Yeah, I think there's definitely a difference between being at the ballpark to watching it on TV in terms of how the length of the game Well, you also have to listen to the announcers, and if they're complaining, then it feels bad, and a lot of the announcers... What's the deal with that? Like, Why have you got so many American announcers that kind of hate on the game? Like, Dude, it's it's baseball's biggest problem. They, they, everyone that is... I mean, anyone that listens to this podcast has heard me say this a ton, but, like, they hate on their own game. Like, who's going to like it if the people that have the megaphone are telling you it's slow and boring? Like, why would anyone give it a shot then? It's so stupid. They need to send out a league-wide memo. Stop hating on baseball. Yeah. Yeah, it's dumb. It's dumb. Anyway, where'd you start? Your, your, where was game one? Season opener? Game one was in... So I was working in China at the start of the year, and I flew to Tokyo to see the Mariners against the Athletics in the Tokyo Jesus Dome. Jesus Christ, right? man. Literally That's game great. one. Yeah, yeah. and um, Ichiro retired in the second game, and uh, I, was, I was on the field for his last BP, and um, the news kind of filtered around during the game. There were obviously, you know, people thought this might be Ichiro's last one. He's in Japan, but it wasn't official until about the fifth or sixth inning of the second game. And word spread out on Twitter, and then you know you kind of realize that y- yeah. you're seeing the end of a. That was know, a, that was a, that was an emotional first game to go to. Very much so, and like you know, as an Asian baseball fan, like he is considered the the hit king. Yeah. Like, you know, no offense to Pete Rose or whatever, but you know he got a lot of hits in the MPB, which is a top top league, and then he came over to you know them will be at age 27 or when he, whenever yeah. he was, and he had over 3,000 hits here. Yeah. And he, you know, for me, he is one of the greatest players that have ever played the game. Ichiro Suzuki. So, uh, you know the game Marry, Fuck, Kill? Oh, Jimmy, language. Jimmy. Man. Okay. What the hell, man? This is something we did on Talking... the hell, mate? This is something we did on Talking Yanks, but Ichiro is a good person to bring us up. Um, uh, an outfield assist, robbing a home run, or a bunt and double. Ooh. You got marry one, fuck one, kill one. Uh, Marry's obviously the best one, right? Yeah. So okay, so. bunt double. Um, <laughs> 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 what were the other options? An outfield assist, like uh, throwing each, someone out at third. Each row throwing someone out from the outfield, Kill. or or robbing a home run. Uh, well, for each row because he's got such an arm on him, I'd have that would be the one I'd kiss or whatever you said. Yeah, yeah. Because mm. uh-huh. you know that that throw he did kiss from right hard. field to third base, you know that iconic throw. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Each row's got a cannon, mate. Like um, and like robbing a home run, like anyone, you know, any it's circumstance. Yeah, it's more about yeah where the balls the proje- I, I agree with you. I uh, we you came agree on double marry because no. I wasn't expecting that at <laughs> no. all. No. Jimmy. No, 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 no. All no. of your <laughs> listeners are shaking their head, going, <laughs> get, <laughs> "Get the Brit off!" What an idiot. Ha, have you watched uh, Robinson Cano's bunt double? Uh, I think it was at Fenway. It's very nice. You should I need watch to that. go on. U- as soon as I get yeah. back to my hotel, I'm, I'm, I'm YouTubing bunt doubles. I'll pull it up. Uh, it's one priority. of the best bunt doubles going. No, I, I think outfield assists are, are way better than robbing a home run. But I think because of Sports Center and stuff, people would think the opposite. Each row retires in front of you. You've watched a game. Yes. You fly into LAX with your dreams and your card again. Where do you go next? After Japan, I went to Seattle. I was part of that. If you remember the Mariners' start to the season, they had an outrageously yeah, good start to the they, season. Yeah, like yeah. a 13 I and saw, 2 or something. I saw their first seven games of the MLB <laughs> season. They were 6 and 1. <laughs> And that was four games against the World Series winning Red Sox as well. So you're the reason why they, they started sucking then. <laughs> no. You were their good luck charm. I had nothing to Once do with it, obviously. Left. But, uh, yeah. you know, the Mariners were on, like, Tim Beckham had a hot start. And uh, you had uh, Santana in the outfield. He's just been, you know, he's, not, he's just been. Domingo. Yeah, fade mm-hmm. or whatever you call non, it. Like, non-tendered, yeah. Non-tendered, sorry, yeah. You like that? You had these, like, um, and obviously Kikuchi was uh, you know, making his start. And he, he's a big star, you say, yeah. in Japan. So I was really interested I was really disappointed with his end to the season. Like he got like a, you know, his ERA was up into the fives. Yeah, yeah. well, uh, that happens a lot. Like it kind of happened with Tanaka's first year. He's a lot better than that, Jimmy. First like. time through the the first time through. I'm a big believer in like when rookie pitchers come up. If they do good their first time through the teams, you have to wait until they face a team twice because then they get to game plan f- specifically for him. Yeah. So you, so Kikuchi was like lights out, and I'm not trying to knock him because I say it for literally every yeah. young pitcher. Well, let's wait until his second time through the league. Um, I yeah. don't not that I think he's bad. It's his first time. Like he can improve. And the the other thing that I've stumbled into that's one of my favorite things this year is that before the last month of the season, ch- just check out guys' stats, and then think about how differently we think about them after that last month. Like someone like Kikuchi. Like I feel like his ERA was mid fours, low fours. 
if you have a bad last month, now your ERA is in the five. If he had a good last month, his ERA might be three nine. And think about just how differently you think about those two pitchers just because of one month, essentially. So I, I, I need to figure out a term of those kind of players. They're like coin flip players or something like that, that if you end with that one good month and four good starts as a starting pitcher, we're going to be talking about you all offseason and be like, he's a solid three guy. Yeah, I call it like I the, like se- him. the September boomer bust. Yeah. But, but better than that. We need something a little cheekier, mate. <laughs> so. All right, so what's your favorite stadium you went to? Um, I mean, I am a Rogues fan, so – Ignoring Kaufman, yeah, I well, love I love the Coliseum. No, you don't. I do. Wow. Yeah. No, I've said it. I've said it several it's times. A concrete jungle. No, man. Like, uh, it's the Coliseum for me is the most Korean or Japanese like in terms of its atmosphere the with energy. the drums and the Hispanic fans. Oh, the, okay. I, I give you that. It, there like is the a right good outfield, outfield. Like, uh, you know, it's uh, it's a really fun, cool, edgy place to go and watch a game of baseball. And you know, the A's have got this. Even in the UK, where I'm from, because of that movie with Brad Pitt, Moneyball. Mm-hmm. people have like an affection towards the A's and you've got that incredible, you know, Kelly Green and, you know, the yeah. those jerseys they've got, you know. The I like those. Yeah. You yeah. love the color green. Yeah, yeah, like I've got this lovely mint, mint shirt yeah. on your game. Shout out Roosevelt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have you seen the Coliseum before Mount Davis? Have you ever seen this? I'll show you. No, people showed it to me on Twitter. Yeah. It's, it was like, it's like chalk and cheese. Yeah, it's, it was like very, very pretty and then they've just fucking ruined it. That looks gorgeous. Like without, what's it called, Mount... Mount Davis, because the owner of the Raiders, the football team that shares the stadium, he wanted to sell more seats when they were good for two years. Oakland, they got quality fans, genuinely some of the best. They fans do. I I've lived met. in the Bay Area for a while. They're, 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 it's a good sports town, but they get the A's are rude to them, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, you know they're getting a new ballpark. I know they've lost the the Warriors to San Francisco, yeah. and the, the Raiders are moving to Vegas. So. I really hope the baseball team stick around because Oakland needs a, a sports team. I think they will. I think they're. I think they're. They're jumping on they that. They might be their team. Like they might own it more now. Yeah. Since the other teams have left. That's an unpopular opinion. I'm fully aware of that, by the way. Again, <laughs> so like the bump so, double okay, and so now the Coliseum. Now, like don't tell me you like Tropicana Field, the Trop in in Tampa Bay. No, I I went through because I'm a big nerd. I did like a rating for every ballpark with about ten categories for each one. Ah, oh, shit. Just to try and be objective exciting. about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Saber metrics. Yeah, That's what that and is. The, you know the trop still came. I think twenty ninth. So, okay. well, so what was thirtieth? Thirtieth was uh, the Blue Jays. Oh, yeah. okay. Didn't like it. Marlins were down there, but I quite like Marlins Park. Isn't as bad as people say it is. Like, what's new? It's big. just the vibe of the team, and they had that sculpture out there that was hideous. Yeah. So it's got a bad rap. And here's the here's the thing about it. Like any ballpark you go to is a lovely old time. So, like, you I know, when, when people say, what's the worst ballpark you went to? I'm, I'm literally thinking. No such thing. I still had a lovely old time. Like, Marlins, they've got some of the best food in any major league mm. ballpark because oh, yeah. they've got that incredible, you know, kind of mix of people down there and they've got all these different foods. I was smashing some Argentinian empanadas. Empanadas, yeah. Oh, Jimmy. Yeah, yeah. jeez. I had some the other day. Mate. Yeah. Where can people find your rankings? I haven't posted them. <laughs> oh, they're secret. <laughs> they're just for me, yeah, because I was trying to go through it. In, uh, <laughs> you got to post them. People That's are dying out. I don't care if, like, I don't need people to see my nerdy rankings. Like, it's just for me. I used to get back and think about it. And that's, uh, that's, that's, a, that's how this company my favorite, started. Yeah. That's my favorite thing you've said so far. Well, Jake, I'll tell you what. Number one of my rankings I isn't love the Coliseum. When you start pointing at me. All right, so what, what's Camden number one? Yards came top. I was just going to ask you, I I love Camden Yards. Camden Yards came top by three points. It's so quaint. What was the total? 41 points. 41 points. I was going to say, I thought, I was thinking 42, but 41's fair. 42 is a good baseball number. Yeah, and there's like, there's kind of tiers. Like, once you kind of look at it, there's tiers where Mm -hmm. you could say, like, within like a certain tier, you can move any of them up and down. I really like Dodger Stadium, for example, but I know some people, accessibility, it struggles with accessibility or whatever, and it's, um, you know, it's what um? Do we know why you're a Royals fan? Did we fly past that a couple I times? I think he's a big Lord fan. Yeah, I, just for the oh, listeners. I love Lord, mate. Nothing to do with, I'm not pro-monarchy. It's, it, it's, it's nothing political <laughs> or anything. I'm not saying, you know, the Queen it deserves to be on the throne. I dated a girl from Kansas City, flew oh. back and forth from South oh. Korea to, to, to see her. Jesus. Fell in love with Kansas City barbecue. That's a long there. distance relationship, man. I got, in a way, I got lucky. I got booted off a Delta flight last minute. They'd overbooked it. Mm. And they said, e- anyone that gets booted off will get some money for future flights. And this like alpha guy in front of me pushed to the front and said, I'm not accepting what you're doing, but if you give us $3,000, I'll do it. 
So they're like, okay, sir, yeah, we're desperate. And I was like, I'll get what Done. he's getting. Yeah. yeah. I'll also take that. Yeah. You shouldn't so. you should have went to three thousand and one just to fuck that guy. <laughs> yeah. I'm not an alpha, so I didn't, <laughs> I didn't have to worry about it, but you're with the right crew. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're with the right crew. Yeah. yeah. So that's how I got to fly back and forth. And I never went to a Royals game when I was with this girl, but um, you know, Kansas City's a lovely place. And Middle America gets a, you know, flyover states, they get a hard rep. Even in Europe, people know oh, about he's brutal. East Coast and West Coast bias. And, you know, I think, you know, you go you go off the beaten track in those, you know, the L Central, the L Central, some of the loveliest people you, you're going to meet in the whole country. So That's what I say. They're very nice people. What else do you say? That, they, that they're, they're, like, really nice. Okay. Jimmy, you know what you said? Yeah. What? You say mean things about the middle of the country, and that's a fact. The, no, they're, like, if... if you're the, the if, biggest East Coast, West Coast bias guy I know. Yeah, I know, but it, it, <laughs> but mid, Midwest fans are, are just like that's the thing. They're nice. Like if the the press is nice to the players, the fans are nice to the players. They okay. if the if they lose in the playoffs, they will clap and say it was a good season though. We really had fun. It was a good season. We had a lovely old time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's, that's just about. not what the Northeast baseball fans are like at all. It's rabid up there, like uh, Philadelphia fans, Excuse Boston me? fans, rabid, rabid. I don't know how you say it. How do you pronounce it? Rabid? Rabid. It's like intense. Like I thought you said you were going to do something weird to me. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, like Philly, I Red Sox, Yankees, like they're all kind of, you know, of a similar. Intense. Ilk in terms of their passion for their hometown or whatever. And uh, yeah, I think that's why a lot of people coming from a soccer background in the UK go towards those teams to support. Because it is that intensity and that fiery passion you see with soccer games in the U football. If you're listening, in I'll get roasted in England if I keep saying soccer. Thank they you. invented it, yeah. the word soccer. So Who did? English. Yeah. Yeah. The, the posh, the upper class. Right. They wanted all the England to change their word, and then the lower class was like, uh, "No, go fuck yourself." But America, they listened to the upper class, and they're like, "Okay, cool. We'll call it soccer." So, like, we were told to call it soccer. It's your guys' fault. I'm not, yeah, I'm not blaming anyone. It <laughs> no, sounds like you were blaming. Like you're blaming. Just trying to be respectful <laughs> to both, both audience bases. All right, we're, we're going to take another quick break, quick break. and then we're going to come back, and Jake's going to ask you 10 questions he prepared. Is that a joke? Is that a joke? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at Jake's eyes. He's definitely not got 10. You know. <laughs> All right, what a fantastic break we just took. But I do want to show you this bunt double I pulled up. Bunt double. Because I think it's one of the best bunt doubles to ever bunt double. Ready? Can you guys live call it? This can I? No, it, we're going to hear it on the on the thing. Oh. First, we have to listen to this stupid YouTube ad. I'm going to mute that. So it's Robinson Cano when he was with the Yankees versus the Red Sox. And they have a huge shift on for him. There's a bunt right down the third baseline. Let's see if Cano could turn it into two. He's steaming towards second, and he just bunted himself into a double. <laughs> Standing I up as well. It. How do you like that? Yeah, I think, you know, it's, it's a about time. probably a coincidence that was against the Red Sox, Jimmy, I'm guessing, from the Yankees. Wow. Yeah. Well, you know. Just one you're familiar with, fair enough. You, so what are your thoughts on the Yankees? I like the Yankees. I know that's an unpopular opinion, but... Um, Not here. No, like... Yeah. Yankee Stadium, they've got a very diverse fan base. They seem less inward-looking than the Red Sox fans who just seem to hate on the Yankees. I've never quite understood where the anger and hatred comes from. They're the most successful team in this, you know, in this millennium. The and Red Sox? The Red Sox are oh, full world because series. Jake will tell you all about it. They're it's it's a weird cultural thing. If I actually researched and did stuff, I think I could write a good paper up about it. But Boston has this weird culture. Well, the Red Sox didn't win for so many years, and it's you know the curse of the babe, et cetera, et cetera. But I think there was, like, three generations, essentially, of Red Sox fans that were told, like, we don't we win. Suck. We're the Red Sox. Every, like, no the, one respects us. The, we're the, a laughing stock. The, the Yankees, you know, they, they win. They buy their players, blah, blah, blah. And we're, we're the Red Sox. We're tough. Like, we'll scrap. But it's, it's just not for us. And so I think, like, three generations have passed that down to each other. And now they're this winning crew that's been awesome. I mean, yeah, even outside of the Red Sox, obviously, like, the – Bruins, the Patriots, uh, the Celtics, to a degree. They're the Yankees of ba basketball, but that's for another time. But so now we have this group that basically has been bred to kind of have this Anger. angry, tough side to them. They are tough. But they're, fans you're, are tough you're right. I mean, for the past 
Whatever it is, ten years, sixteen years. I mean, they're because they're winning, and they've I think been the class well, of the sport. But they they're so angry still, and it's a weird mix. <laughs> the most successful team this this millennium. Yeah. And I, yeah. yeah. As a new fan, I, yeah, I guess I, I haven't quite worked out why they're not just happier that they've got a great team and you know they're doing a lot of things really well. They've got that fantastic ballpark. That's my favorite one to watch on TV. You know, if okay. Boston are at home, I love watching you know the you know that that green they've got yeah. on the big. Uh, you're big green. You love big green. fan of the color green. Yeah, I mean, I, I love this mint, <laughs> this mint shirt, and I love the yeah, the big monster, whatever. Yeah, yeah Fenway's got that lovely color scheme. Coming from uh, the England and uh, the the uh, the Prem League, uh, and we were talking about re- relegation. Yeah, does it blow your mind that like tanking is a thing? Like the Orioles are purposely doing terrible because in you know they would get relegated if this was their strategy. No, I mean, I find it, it's all, because I'm just learning, I find it fascinating. I know the Astros were horrific for three seasons, Mm -hmm. you know, really, really bad under, you know, Jeff Lunau, who's Mm -hmm. turned it all around with the 2017 World Series and stuff. And I know the guy that runs the Orioles is from the Astros front office. And he's essentially doing, you know, precisely what the Astros did for those three seasons. And the Cubs did it first. Um, Under... Under Theo Epstein, when he came from yeah. the Red Sox and went there, they were really bad. And he, and he told the fan base, we're going to be really bad for three years, but then we'll be good. And, and that they takes won the some World balls Series. in a market yeah. like Chicago to do that. I mean, it's one thing in Baltimore, no offense to them, but if you're in a, you know, what was Chicago's the third, it's going to be the second biggest city in America, you know, in the next 10 years, whatever. So it doesn't break your heart? It doesn't like, because part of it, I understand the strategy, but last year... We had so many teams tanking. I mean, we I'm an AL Central fan, so yeah. I know all about oh. it. Yeah, like the White Sox, the Tigers. The, the Indians w- were desperate to tank. They just had too many good players. They would have tanked if they didn't have so many good players. They're like, fuck it, I guess we have to try. I guess, Jimmy, like the way I look at it as a, as a newcomer is this is just something that happens. Yeah. I've not really thought about yeah. whether it's right or wrong. Oh, okay. Because I can see, you know, with the Astros and with the Cubs, that it, that leads, to, it leads to success in the future. I would prefer... I think baseball, instead of focusing on whether a game is exactly three hours or three hours, 20 minutes, maybe it should focus more about ensuring that fans have a competitive team to go out and support yeah. every season. Yeah. But I don't know, you know, as a new fan, I'm not here with any ideas to suggest how that can happen. I, I just know the Royals have sucked since I supported them in 2017. Yeah. I missed the 2015 World Series and Damn. I'd love to, you know, we've got some exciting players with that, you know, Mondesi and, you know, I like watching Whit Merrifield and stuff, but... Uh, Jorge Soler, geez, I mean, what a what is he? What a year, last, yeah, man! Uh, it was crazy last year, but uh, it would be nice to have you know to, to, to tune in and you know stay up till <laughs> four in the morning and see more than a third of your you know wins or whatever. Like it's pretty rough. You have any animosity towards Tim Anderson? No, I love bat flips. Okay, no, I think um, uh, you know to be honest, I think the pitchers, Chris Archer, he's one. I love Chris Archer. I love his passion. I love sometimes he kind of moonwalks off the mound and he. F- Pumps his fist and he shouts or whatever, but if you're going to do that, yeah, don't get your panties in a twist when one of you know when a hitter smashes one and you know, he watches it or whatever because you can't you can't pimp it and then get upset when someone else tries to pimp it. Right, so you're going to fist pump your strikeout, but you hit a home run off me and I now I'm sad. Yeah, J- Jake, exactly. For for new fans to baseball, emotion and passion for the game, and you know seeing controversy sometimes and bench clearing brawls. I know the Yankees. That's how you you know with the Tigers back. Was that two years ago, Jimmy? That's how you got uh, yeah. seventeen, two thousand seventeen. Roman, yeah. and Mickey Roman, and Mickey Cavs. Yeah, that was an incredible sequence. You yeah. know, of kind of hit batters or whatever, and tensions rising and bench clear and all the rest of it. And you know, maybe it brings the game into disrepute to some extent, but I don't think bat flips brings the game into disrepute. It's it's an emotional thing. It's a celebration. Hitting a hitting a baseball is one of the hardest things to do in professional sports. So I keep getting told. <laughs> If you yeah. can do that and you, you know, you flip your bat and celebrate it, you celebrate a touchdown, you celebrate a three point or yep. whatever, like yep. I think people need to stop being so sensitive about it to be honest. Yeah. yeah. It's the weird it's kind of weird cultures in, in baseball and golf. It Gol- golf's another weird one that it's like, why why don't we Get into golf. A it's little all the more old like sports. It's the sports that yeah. weren't, uh, you no, know, I guess so. and NBA, NFL, those all became mainstream yeah, like in like the 60s. And then, like, they became really big in the 80s. And that was the era of glam and, like, entertainment. And that's why, but baseball and horse racing and golf are so rooted in, like, 1800s, 1900s America that there were the gentleman's game. Because that was a world where it was, like, the fake gentleman was, like, top dog and it's all stupid i I hate it when people say you know respect the game 
you know, in Japan they bat flip, and Japan's one of the most yeah. respectful countries in the, on on the planet. And yeah. you know, they didn't get upset about it. If anyone would, it'd be the Japan, you know, the Japanese, because respect there is such a huge part of their culture. Yeah. So I think you know, these Americans, whatever, particularly the people that sometimes are doing the commentary, who really get upset about it. Well, and it's ridiculous. Like it has it. been around. There's just we have more media and cameras now. Like you'll you'll see clips from ninety three, ninety four, and someone will jack yeah. a homer and toss their bat. It's joyful. It's a joyful yeah. expression. I think as long as you're not, it's not intended with malice. Because sometimes people do like scream at the pitcher or at the, and that's kind of like we we don't need that. Who There's cares? one where I got cross about it. Bautista against the Rangers. Uh, yeah. that, that Blue Jays Rangers series that went to five games and I was watching that in Korea. I was on a school trip. I was in some mountains with some like loads of kids, teenagers. So and I woke up early to watch it on my phone and Bautista flipped his bat and I was just like, when when Rugi hit him the next season, I'm not advocating violence. I hate <laughs> violence. <laughs> but I thought that was a disrespectful bat flip, even though it's a highly emotive one. And yeah. I think it's just because of the Shinsu Chu. I'm a low-key Rangers oh, okay. fan. So right. I was livid about that one, but... When you said you were in the mountains with a bunch of kids, I just want we're gonna chop ski up that resort. Sound clip. Yeah, ski yeah. resort. We're on a yeah. on a sure. residential, keep, whatever keep you call it. Keep telling people that. Yeah. What um No, I had a question. Okay. But I forget it. Okay. Even better. Yeah. I was but I did have one. my question was gonna be do you do you have questions for us? I mean, you the three of us just walked through the lobby of winter meetings. We were all fighting off our fans and it mm-hmm. was pretty crazy down there. <laughs> um uh, none of that happened. This <laughs> well, <Yeah>. okay. <laughs> and Bill edit that. Um, I don't know. Like, bring it. Like, we, you've, you've been under the microscope for a little bit. Do you have something for us? And yeah. let it be known that when I rem- remember my question, I'm going to ask. Yeah. Okay. So okay. One thing I'm always curious about with Americans is, you know, with all of the sports you have here, why did you choose to invest your time in baseball? Like, how did you choose that one over the other sports? Oh, I, I was born into baseball. Uh, so, like, I didn't, I didn't find it uh, later in life like my dad played in college um we were yankees fans growing up so i was seven years old when the yankees won in 96 and we would sit as a family i was seven years old but we would watch the games and my dad would make us but wear rally caps and then we my i moved like every three years and yankees baseball was kind of my family's identity like wherever we went we're gonna sit on the couch we're gonna watch playoff games together and then i played baseball my brother plays baseball so i was just born into a baseball family my mom's a big Yankees fan. My grandma was in the summer. We'd go to my grandma's house and I'd sit with my grandma and my great grandmother and just watch the Yankees during day the day. Um, so, and I think that's different on, on the East Coast. You have that more. With and you baseball. traveled around, right, Jimmy? As a child, you yeah. traveled around a lot. So yeah, the yeah. Yankees for you is that one kind of home. Yeah, yeah. it's like it was like our identity. Um, the Northeast is just baseball is more ingrained in people there than the rest of the country to a degree. I'm not saying like. No one else likes baseball, but there, it is just more like heightened. So I had no choice. I love baseball, and I was born into like a baseball family. Jake, before we come to you, mate, do you dislike the Mets more than the Red Sox? Like, what's the? Oh rivalry? no, I like the Mets. I like the Mets. I, is it a friendly rivalry? Then, even though it's your closest. No, team? I I don't care. I like making fun of the Mets because it's funny, and they're an easy target. Right. But the whole little brother thing is very true. Yeah. Uh, and I like and know it's arrogant, and Mets fans hate this. Do they hate you then? Not as yeah, you so they hate it. us. Oh, okay. Uh, I I if the if the Mets were in the World Series when the Mets were in the World Series against the Royals, I was rooting heavy for the Mets. Um, they're like my little brother, and I would be proud of the, them if the they were. Mets literally they don't trade with the Yankees because they're like scared. <laughs> yeah. Like it's like they could have their best trade offer. It could be with the Yankees. It would be the best thing for the Mets organization. But they won't do it. They could have got Domingo Herman for uh, Jay Bruce back in 2017. And they said no and took a lesser offer because they were like, we don't trade with the Yankees. And it's like, whatever. But, yeah, I just, I mean, everyone's like, they are a little brother. And I like them. But there's no animosity. So you've got no, Jay, you've got no a- animosity towards the Mets either. No. You think no. they're dumb. We think, I, we think their ownership's dumb. But we're not. That's where I, we're I like the Mets, everyone. man. We I, like I told you, grew up in Connecticut, so it's a lot of Yankees, a lot of Red Sox, but I mean a chunk of Mets too. Was it family that got you into baseball predominantly? A over little bit. The other sports? My 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 family was Yankees fans. I'm I'm a I'm a big sports person. Like I, you know, over lunch we talked some stuff and like <laughs> we we talked about where we're heading and all. Thank you for lunch, by uh, the way. I forgot to we, thank we you. We got earlier. you one beer. Get over yourself. <laughs> um, we like we talked about like what what what's your end game? What's our end game? The three of us don't know, <laughs> but like I'm sports. I I almost 
I almost stopped you before when you said that, you know, Disney had our youth. Like, I'm one of the few. Disney didn't have my youth. Like, Mate, you bossed it, yeah. Yeah, well, I'm... I was looking for a British term to send your way, and I didn't have anything. But um, I was always sports. So um, baseball, I think my my big speech that you could take and borrow whatever um, that Jimmy's partially adapted is that when you watch a baseball game, and I think part of it is a lifestyle and getting into it early a little bit, when you watch a baseball game, you could see a million things happening at once or you see nothing. Yeah. Like I, I think a lot of people, if you're not a baseball fan and you turn on a baseball game and it's, Zero, zero. People are like, ah, oh, nothing going on in this game. Well, I like, think when, like, when's, when's the home run coming? Yeah, or an example would be in between pitches, we can see, oh, two strikes now, so they just moved the third base to second base, and they're re- redoing the shift now with two strikes. Oh, he just shook off that call from the catcher, and they're doing other things. The and, outfield and s- shifting, the deep. And the someone infield. else would be like, he hasn't thrown the pitch yet. You know, so you either see everything or you see nothing. That's the beauty of baseball, isn't it? Because yeah. you can go to a game and have a few beers with your mates and take it easy and not really look for all of that stuff. Yeah. Or you can go on your own and score the game and look yeah. for all that stuff and the signs and the manager's my, movements. My, my, dad was at a, yeah, my dad was at an Angels game, and he sent me a video of Cole Calhoun pacing his shift for each player, and he would take a card out of his back pocket and then like pace. You could tell he was counting his steps, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten and then stand there for the lefty. And then he'd pull out his card again, and it was like, that's so f- fascinating to me. Yeah. Like, it's like a scientific outfield And I play. mean, there, it, it just goes so deep that it's like, I, I don't know, I think that's part of the reason America, like, um, my basketball example is, um, and I don't know how deep you are in basketball, but it's kind of a star-driven league, but uh, if you are, if you're a casual NBA fan, you're, you're the odds are you're going to know the best player on a team. And, like, if they were playing... In L.A. tomorrow, you'd be like, oh, yeah, the, you know, it'll be cool to see that guy play. Baseball, I think that's part of the problem. People don't know the stars as well, but that's kind of another thing. Mm-hmm. But think about, and you're you're so deep in this world, but, like, you talked about Tim Beckham and the Royals. And, like, if you know those kind of things, too, and a, a batter's history versus a pitcher, or if a, a, now we're getting into advanced stats, and I think we have these advanced stats, but we need to figure out how to make people enjoy those. And, like, for me, it would be, like, Oh, this hitter, or I, I think the perfect example was Juan Soto. He was the best hitter against high fastballs this year. And then he comes in, and A, um, it was Hater for the Brewers. who The he, best he high fastball him. pitcher. So that was sweet. But then against Houston, I mean, it's Verlander and Cole. And so, and those guys are some of the best high fastball pitchers in baseball. So I think it's finding a way to get those stats in the open that, like, I think when, when the people at this table watch that, you're like, Let's you, go. You you move up on the couch and you're like, this is awesome. But I think if a casual fan sees that, they they can't necessarily put that all together. Yeah. End of the day, I like baseball and all sports. Oh, I Next remember. Question. I remembered. <laughs> I remembered what I was going to say, but it it was it pertained to the last conversation. But you said Juan Soto reminded me. We're talking about bat flips, and when Juan Soto and Bregman did that thing where they carried their bat the first pace, I did a breakdown of it and I posted it on YouTube. And I I have a lot of people that watch the breakdowns on YouTube, but they don't watch baseball at all or they're foreign and they're from a different country and like no knowledge and i had so many comments were like why is this a big deal that he carried yep. his bat 90 feet and then dropped it instead of dropping it at the beginning like why does this matter and i was like really sat back and i was like huh <laughs> like society was really taught us some things that like for no reason like, yeah why does that matter that is weird yeah i mean i guess it matters because you don't normally do it and the fact yeah. he did do it it must be. Well, it matters because like society has given us this rule. Baseball society Bregman has given knows us this you're rule. You're not meant to do that. Yes. So he, the fact that he's doing it he is going against the grain. But it's like, why was that rule established in the first place? Is so silly. Yeah. I think I found another reason why I I love ba- like I uh, baseball is like my number one sport. Um, well, second. Um, honestly, to play basketball, and that's hilarious because you've now seen my body type. Um. I, I love football, too. I mean, they're, they're both up there. I just I love strategy. I love all of it. I love the players and everything. But I think, I think with baseball, in a basketball game, the best players are going to be the best players. In a football game, most of the time, you're going to have some guys step up. I think that's kind of part of what I loved about baseball is that if you're, if you're the eighth hole third baseman, which <laughs> was a niche I had <laughs> during my brief playing career, if you get three balls that day, 
and you make a couple really good plays on them, and then you go two for three from the field, you could be the best player on the field that day. And I don't think you could say that with a lot of other sports. Yeah. I've got, I've got one go more question for down. you boys. What's up? You want to go say hi really quick? I think he's leaving. Okay. Sorry, that's uh, the... That's the uh, Steve Donahue, Steve Donahue the, trainer. the trainer for the Yankees for like years. Oh, he's he's a big deal. I waved <laughs> I waved at him as if he was an old family friend. Right. So he looked at me like, "Are you an old family friend?" And then he 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 cut in and, and gave me a long look and realized I don't know who that guy I'm is. I walk away from that guy pretty yeah. quickly. So, but <laughs> you've seen a lot of people do that for us. One of the better Instagrams. Yeah, I've got one more question for you. Yeah. Okay. Because like one thing that is prevalent in the UK is the kind of fashion of baseball. So I, I want to know what you boys think. Other than the Yankees, what is your favorite MLB logo, like for hats? Oh, the old Brewers logo with the M and the B that makes a glove. I think that's awesome. Um, logo is different. I, I don't really have a – besides that, uh, I really like the new Padres uniforms. The brown yeah. ones. Uh, the one Tatis is wearing in the – yeah, because I, I like bringing different colors back. Like, we, when I post things on uh, Twitter or, or we do uh, for every series, I make a graphic for the series, and every team is blue. Every team is like a dark blue. So I'm so happy that we're getting baby blue uniforms for the Royals. Uh, Rangers have got that. Rangers new one have as got well. that Jamie new Gallo one. It. Padres are going to brown. I like the Kelly green. Nike's done a good job so far, I'd say. I think the Diamondbacks need to go back to purple. No, it's a hat I think I like. What? I'm just off the top of my head, I think I like the White Sox hat. That was like just that logo. That 90s kind of. Just kind of, you know, black and white. S-O-X down in like a. Ooh, the diagonal. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to think what I'm thinking of. Bring, bring it up, Jimmer. I'm, try, I'm just going MLB logos, and I'm going to get a picture of all of them. It's not bad. A lot of them are just the letter, and then, a, you know, just the letter. So here you go. Okay. So we've, we've now got the logos up. A lot of them are yeah, pretty Yeah, no, you had it. I, I was picturing there, they have, like, the throwback. Or oh, okay. What I thought you were referencing was kind of their throwback. I think there's, like, a hint of red, and it's kind of diagonal. But, no, you're, you're, you're right. I, I do like that logo. That one was popular in the nineties, I think, because it was it NWA, yeah, yeah, the band yeah, and yeah, Ice Cube yeah. used Ice to Cube wear those yeah. hats. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they were quite popular. Today was a good day. Yeah, didn't have to use my AK. <laughs> 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 so, all right, thanks for sitting down with us, man. I think yeah. we've run, run, thanks, me. run it out. Where can people find you? Yeah, I'm just on Twitter at baseball Brit. And uh, do people come up to you and, and call you baseball Brit, or do do they call you Jelly? Um, at first, they might just shout. Boy, baseball Brit, and I'll say my name's Joey. <laughs> but on Twitter, I'm still baseball Brit, so I understand why What's they say that. In, in this season, are you trying to go to 162 again, or have we no, not gotten there you yet? You can't do that again. That's insane. No, I, no this season, um, I'm hoping to go to the 42 minor league teams that are being threatened with <laughs> being closed down. <laughs> are you really? And find out about yeah the impact it could have on the communities. and like you That's know, awesome. I'll go back yeah. the following year as a follow-up to find out how if... You know, so do you like to write? I like because that's a book. Thing. Yeah, it's a book. Hopefully, um, I've I've always been interested in small towns and about. Uh, I love small town America. Dude, stuff. I, this feels like a corny thing that people say at the end of pod podcast, but it, when you're like around the Northeast or something, yeah, like let's do something. Like let's go see the New Hampshire it, River monsters. Is it the Brooklyn Cyclones are being threatened or something? They're one of the forty-two. Like one of those. No, is I, it Staten Island no, Yankees? Staten Island Yankees are being threatened. Okay. Yeah. It's the team with that incredible backdrop of yeah. Manhattan, and yeah, like they're yeah. one of the teams in. In the UK, we have a minor league affiliate of the UK, which is the Erie Seawolves at the AA level. Mm. And they're one of the teams that are in the 42 as well. There's four AA teams. And I got to know their general manager and their play-by-play um, broadcaster. And we send UK fans out to Erie and you know, they give us merch. We take it back. And they're a team that we really care about. And they're one of the ones on the chopping block. So I want to find out you know, what could potentially happen. They're, they're plowing loads of money into improving their facilities as well this off-season mm. with the Sword of Damocles hanging over them with the potential for MLB to move away from the area. So, uh, yeah, this Dream League, this independent thing, I love indie balls. So, yeah, it's just fascinating. So that's what I'm doing next season, basically. That's awesome. That's really cool. I'm, I'm, I'm interested. Write a book on it so I can read it. I have one more, one last thing. What was the cool, coolest thing that's happened to you during this whole thing? Oh, did you see any walk-offs? Damn, a lot of questions. Walk-offs? Is it a player? Uh, besides meeting us, like, what would you say is like... Oh, it's going to sound really corny. Yeah, it will. The best thing that happened to me over the whole trip 
wasn't baseball related. Oh, it was God. it was America related. You found yourself? No, okay. I didn't find myself. No, man, <laughs> I found myself. I know exactly what I am. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> it was people coming up to me sometimes at games and saying, "Hey, you know, where are you staying tonight?" And I'd be like, "In my car," and they'd be like, "No, you can you know come back and." This happened in, uh, th- there was one place in Western Texas. I went to Midland, but they got the rock yeah. out. Yeah. I literally walked out and this guy was like, hey, Joey, like, where are you staying? I was like, in my car. It was like 100 degrees. <laughs> He's like, no way. And he took me out to a rodeo. We, like, we had some beers and like line dancing. And they were playing like David Copperfield or Mr. Copperfield's song, like some country line dancing sure. song. Went back to his farm. Uh, yeah, it was crazy. So, yeah, I mean, that's the best bit about the trip is just how unexpected it is. Now, kind people are in the States, how optimistic you guys are compared to us on the whole. Yeah, I think that's, uh, I think a lot of people, the rep that America has isn't that. But I think on a, on a one-to-one basis, I think you find a lot of hospitality, especially in the South. Or I, th- I think anywhere. Northeast is more brazen right away, but they will help you out the same way. Once you've so made yeah. that connection with, yeah. like, an American cool. person, like, yeah, like, there would, be yeah. No, there would be no way if you told me you were sleeping in a car, oh, yeah. like, no. Uh, there was one bloke I stayed with who was the vice president of a team called the Falcons that play in the NFL, and uh, we stayed up really, really late one night going through his old baseball cards. And I found a, I found a Nolan Ryan rookie card. And when I Googled it and it was worth $25,000. Damn. And his wife came down and was like, boys, go to bed. It's one in the morning. And like, I was like, no, look, I found this Nolan Ryan rookie card. So she was like, keep going through his old <laughs> cards. <laughs> Put you to work. Your sleepover yeah. went to work real quick. <laughs> yeah, just unexpected stuff like that's the Who's best. Can you say his name? VP of the Falcons. Is that like Dimitrov or something like that? He's um he's the right hand man of Arthur Arthur Blank who owns yeah. um owns the Atlanta Falcons. Yeah, I don't want to. It'll be in the book, but yeah. We're gonna yeah. yeah. Man. When's the book come out? Uh, I've, I've got to finish the proposal first and see if yeah people are up for it. But Dude, it'll be it'll definitely be up for it. I think spring twenty twenty two is what they're saying. So yep. All right, I'll do a combo with you off air about off the air book. off air about the book because I think I can lend some something maybe. I'm going to play the outro song and we're going to end the show, but this was fantastic. Thank you very much for joining us. Jake, Jimmy, thanks ever so much for having me on. It's been a pleasure. You're a beautiful man. (laughs) On and off the field. Oh, this is the intro song. (laughs) I blew it. That's the intro song. Hold on. Okay, everyone, here we go. Yeah, that's the outro song.